Hello, I'm your County Commissioner Josh Kearns. I'm sorry we could not all be together in person today. I would have loved nothing more than to deliver this message looking out over an amazing crowd. We've had so many events taken from our community over the past 18 months, and unfortunately, the decision was made to make this event virtual today. I have the honor of serving with two other great commissioners as we oversee a county with a population of nearly 540,000 people. The county has over 2,500 lane miles, and I ask you to remember that number when you're waiting for our snow plows to come by after the first big dumping of snow in the winter. We have over 50 departments and 2,000 employees that serve the people of Spokane County. We serve the county from law enforcement to roads, parks to permitting, licensing to land use. We also serve alongside the auditor, assessor, treasurer, clerk, prosecutor, and sheriff. Spokane County has 12 Superior Court judges and eight District Court judges. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the hardworking employees at Spokane County. For the last 18 months, just like so many others in our community, they faced uncertainty, but through it all, they continued to provide essential services to the citizens of our great county. We are guided by the mission to make Spokane County the best place to live, work, and play. And we are succeeding. We are home to some of the most beautiful parks, golf courses, top-notch employers, quality education opportunities, and attractions and fun for all ages. As always, I would like to highlight some of our amazing community partners, starting with the Spokane International Airport. Co-owned 50-50, by the county and the city of Spokane, SIA has seen a strong rebound from the slowdown of 2020, now offering nonstop service to 21 destinations, and it only took a few months into 2021 for SIA to get back near the record-setting activity of 2019, and passenger counts are improving each and every month. The Spokane Workforce Council continues to help job seekers at all stages of career goals. They run the next gen zone to help youths age 16 to 24 earn their GEDs with resume prep, interview skills, and job placement. The Workforce Council hosts some of the most well-attended job fairs in the region. And of course, they operate our local WorkSource office. They are heavily involved in the Resource Center of which Spokane County has now partnered as the leaseholder for the space. And it is now called the Resource Center of Spokane County. This is a one-stop shop for services for people in our community. In short, no matter what rung you are on, the Workforce Council can help you climb your career ladder. Visit Spokane, our destination marketing organization. Visit Spokane attracts conventions and tourists to our area, generating millions upon millions of dollars of economic activity each and every year. They are a major player in promoting our region. And finally, Greater Spokane Incorporated. Spokane County is a visionary sponsor for GSI, and we have designated them our region's Associate Development Organization, or ADO. They have been a great partner for many years and certainly played a huge role in 2020, helping us with a grant program that we'll touch on a little later. 2020 was a year that none of us want to go back to. It was marked with devastation for so many families in our community, physically, emotionally, and financially. Students were forced to learn virtually with many schools unprepared for such a task. Businesses were shuttered and dreams crushed. Many families for the first time in their lives, not knowing where their next meal would come from. During all of this confusion and uncertainty came a rare bipartisan piece of legislation known as the CARES Act, that provided Spokane County with over $91 million of funding to help combat the impacts of the coronavirus. The Board of County Commissioners decided early on that we wanted to prioritize public health, food security, and helping our struggling small businesses. I'd now like to present a video we produced to highlight some of the investments we made into our community in 2020 through the CARES Act funding.
pre-pandemic, Spokane was really on the cusp of achieving and realizing everything we'd worked for for decades. Downtown was booming, our unemployment rate was low, our housing prices were still affordable, we were able to attract businesses to town. It was heartbreaking to watch what happened as COVID hit. People then lost their jobs and our downtown became really a ghost town. In March 2020, federal government passed a $2.2 trillion federal stimulus bill and Spokane County received a direct allocation of over $91 million. Over the next nine months, the county then sought input from the public service providers and the business community in order to make sure we allocated funding to those who needed it the most. Absolutely recognizing that this is a public health emergency, the number one priority for the county was making sure that our public health district was fully funded. We had to flex up significantly as an organization because we had to amplify our capabilities. So we had to add not only resources locally, but we even had some contracted services to help us with uh, contact tracing and disease investigation because we had to go from a handful to several hundred people in a matter of weeks. From the recovery perspective, the CARES funding was the most significant piece of funding. Without that, we wouldn't have been able to really uh, expand our services to the extent that we did and have the reach that we've had in the community. We saved lives. There's no question in my mind that we actually did. In order to address our food insecurity needs and those that were dealing with barriers to accessing food nutrition, we enlisted the help of Second Harvest to help the county get uh, the food out and also to address those barriers of transportation. The thing that was really, you know, both rewarding and heartbreaking was how many people, they'd never been to a food bank in their life and all of a sudden they had to say, I can't feed my family, I need help, I've never done this before. Then as we got a little bit deeper into it, it was clear that the need was gonna be huge and that we were gonna need some real money to go out and just find enough food to help everybody. It wasn't long before we had $9 million to buy food. If we didn't have that purchase power that we got from the CARES grant, I don't see how we could have done the response without it. We bought 6 million pounds of food. In order to be able to support the efforts to keep our homeless population safe and also to provide a safe environment for those that are providing those services, Spokane County partnered with the City of Spokane and allocated some of our CARES dollars to enhance the facilities that we were using, also engage an additional facility, and also to make sure that, that we had a safe environment for those that were needing the assistance. The CARES money from the county, nearly $3 million, made a huge impact on how we address homelessness because we were able to use those funds to purchase and refurbish facilities that we could then meet our goal of, of offering 24-7 sheltering, wraparound services, and, and bridge housing. A high priority for us to make sure that consistently across the board, all of our businesses had access to masks, hand sanitizer, anything that they needed to make sure that, that environment was safe. So we purchased all of that equipment and product, and then we also ran distributions, four of them throughout the year, to make sure businesses had access to it. We opened it up to all our nonprofits as well. Open Together was a $10 million program that was to benefit both Spokane County small businesses and Spokane County nonprofits. Grants were allotted up to $10,000. If you were a sole proprietor, $2,500 was the cap on the program then. And we had some metrics that we built internally to help us identify uh, what level of funding a business would qualify for. The Spokane County CARES dollars provided the stability to our nonprofits at a time of uncertainty. It was critical support when they didn't know when there would be dollars coming in the door. Over $2 million was awarded. These funds were used to support um, fixed expenses for organizations, you know, whether it's paying the rent, providing support for um, salaries for employees, providing program support. So many of our nonprofits, as they were serving the community, had to learn how to serve the community in a new and safer way. And so often they were just simply trying to figure out how do they keep their staff safe and how do they keep the community safe as they provide those services. 
been just an incredible opportunity to work with our county commissioners. Appreciate that they brought leadership not only to the city, but that they didn't forget the rural parts of the county. Many of those businesses used those funds towards their basic rent utility needs, and a number of them also used those dollars towards things like their, their personal protective equipment, some of just the basic operations that they needed to be able to survive during a time that was so uncertain for those small business owners. Those dollars really came behind them to help them just maintain their business. The relief that we've been able to provide during the pandemic is really about helping to retain the employers that we have here in our community and their employees. And that's fundamental to economic development. And so I see a lot of opportunity to build off of that as we move forward. Spokane County additionally helped fund our school districts. And everybody was doing what they had to to make sure that our kids and families had what they need to be successful. So beginning in Right after, I think it was like March 17th, all of our students were to learn from home. So we had never done anything like that in the history, really, of public education in the U.S. It took several weeks for us to start hitting any kind of a stride when it came to providing any kind of education for our students last spring. We wanted to be able to provide quality education to all of our students, regardless of whether their parents chose to keep them at home for remote learning or they were coming in for face-to-face -face instruction. There's no way we could have done that well without CARES dollars, quite frankly. So managing and allocating out over $91 million is no small feat. It was pretty amazing to watch, actually. The commissioner's willingness to sit down with us as economic development agencies and really lean into our expertise and our, our skill sets that our organizations could provide in that moment in time, I truly think we came up with some really great solutions for this community. It was just wonderful to see our nonprofit community come together in partnership with the county through the CARES program and that together they were able to serve the community in need. Looking forward in, in the Mead School District, we're very hopeful. We couldn't be more pleased and more proud of the teamwork, county support, the parents, the staff, and everybody working together to educate our kids safely. And so we've proven that we could do that during the hardest of times. I would say that the silver lining in this pandemic has really been the collaboration that we've been able to do regionally. First, to respond to the pandemic, but then it has set the framework and we've moved forward to keep that framework in place to address other issues regionally. Homelessness, certainly one of them during the pandemic and after the pandemic, as well as I anticipate other issues like housing and economic development, recovery and building on what we've been able to do. So it's a great time to work with our regional partners. But it was the way that we spent our money that I am truly proud of what Spokane County did as we came together with other organizations to spend those dollars. It is amazing the way we've come together to help so many people in our community. Some of the other ways we spent CARES money was through providing funding for our local fire districts to purchase equipment for our firefighters that kept them and the people they serve safe. We funded a great program through our local farmers markets to purchase locally grown food and provide healthy food boxes for those struggling in our community. We also heard how the issues around childcare were exacerbated during the pandemic. We funded childcare services at a cost of $3 million working with community-minded enterprises. We put millions towards paying off back utility payments for our citizens, and we made the county more efficient through teleworking and improving the county's ability to provide services virtually, saving you, our constituents, time and money from having to come down to the courthouse to do your business. The county has now been entrusted with ARP funds, or the American Rescue Plan, to assist with the recovery efforts. These funds will come in two installments, the first half this year, the second half next year. We've already received our first $50 million and we'll receive another approximately $50 million next year. We have until December of 2024 to allocate these funds and until December of 2026 to actually spend these dollars. This money 
is to help with the long-term recovery. We are looking for ways to get a strong multiplier effect and get the biggest bang for the buck with this money. Each jurisdiction in our community is receiving ARP funds. This graphic shows how much each of our regional partners are receiving. As with the CARES dollars, if you have ideas for projects or programs this money could be used for, please reach out to us and share your thoughts. The county has been buzzing with activity since the last state of the county. Although we spent a great deal of time focused on the impacts of COVID, we found great ways to improve the quality of life, economic outlook, and criminal justice system in our county. Over 70% of our general fund budget goes to criminal justice and public safety. Many individuals that are in justice involved are struggling with some form of substance abuse or mental illness. This month, we opened the Spokane Regional Stabilization Center. This facility has 16 beds for mental health crisis stabilization, 14 beds for withdrawal management, and 16 intensive inpatient beds. This will be a game changer for our local law enforcement by providing a place other than an emergency room or jail to take nonviolent offenders who are experiencing a mental health crisis. We had a ribbon cutting ceremony last week for the facility and I'd like to thank our state and city partners who assisted with funding to make this facility a reality. It was a long time in the making and the positive impacts will be great for our community. Earlier this year, we opened our new intake and release center on the county campus for people accused of low level crimes. This was a pilot program to help alleviate crowding and the risk of COVID outbreaks at the Spokane County Jail's booking area due to social distancing constraints. The facility also hosted a professional navigator who could direct defendants to available social services on their way out. About 13% of people who are booked into the jail qualify for immediate release based on what they are accused of. This center only processed individuals who are deemed not to be a safety risk to the community and were eligible for immediate release on their own recognizance while waiting to go in front of a judge. The entire process could take as little as 20 minutes under the right circumstances. On the economic development front, we have seen tremendous growth in sales tax revenue and new businesses deciding to call Spokane County their home. Commercial and residential construction is booming. We have a new facility for Knife River being built near the state line. Spokane Valley is home to a new Amazon facility on Trent. And our public development authorities continue to show an impressive level of success, helping bring more job opportunities to our region. A report released last month shows the Amazon Fulfillment Center on the West Plains generated more than $550 million in economic activity. The facility created 4,000 direct jobs in our region and an additional 3,300 indirect jobs related to the Fulfillment Center that opened in June of 2020 right inside the West Plains PDA. From a quality of life standpoint, Spokane County has been busy. We have operated three world-class golf courses for many years, but this year we went through a rebranding in partnership with Klute Hosmer, and we are thrilled with the final product. As you see here, these are the new logos for our courses, professional, cohesive, and representative of each course. After a long wait following the governor's shutdown orders last year, we were finally able to open our newly remodeled Northside Aquatic Center at Bidwell Park. This was part of a massive project that not only expanded the pool deck, added slides, improved concessions through a partnership with the Spokane Indians baseball team, but also completed Bidwell Park. What used to be dirt and weeds is now a beautiful 19 acre park with baseball fields, sand volleyball courts, pickleball courts, walking paths, and nature playground, and a traditional playground with accessible equipment for children with disabilities. This is an absolute gem for our community and I wanna thank our amazing Parks and Recreation team for making this a reality. I hope you all will take time as we approach the indoor track season to go see the recently completed podium. Located on the North Bank and operated by the Public Facilities District, 
It is a world-class facility that is attracting world-class athletes to our community to try to set records on what could be the fastest indoor track in the world. The banked corners allow for runners to keep up their momentum while racing. Spokane County, through the sale of bonds, was able to ensure the podium became a reality for our community. At the beginning of summer, we sold the Spokane County Raceway to the Kalispell Tribe of Indians for $6.1 million. Spokane County purchased this facility over a decade ago, and I think it is quite apparent now that the county should have never been in the business of racing. We are glad to see the Kalispell Tribe will continue to operate this facility as a track, and we know they have the ability to make this track something that we could not. We recently concluded the Spokane County Interstate Fair. It felt great to have the fair back. We worked closely with the Washington State Department of Health and the Spokane Regional Health District to ensure we could provide a safe, family-friendly event. We had great musical acts, the rodeo, the demolition derby, farm exhibits, and vendors. Our attendance this year was more than 112,000 people. After the year we had in 2020, it was wonderful to see the joy that we as a county could bring to the families of our community through the fair. As we continue to move forward as a community, we are committed to providing you the quality service you have come to expect and deserve. There are big things happening in Spokane County. That is why we see more and more people choosing to call this community home. From our parks to our scenic vistas, from our golf courses to our indoor sporting facilities, from our schools to our economic development opportunities. This is an amazing place to call home. It is an absolute honor to serve as your county commissioner. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Have a great rest of your day.